Makes no? no sense why we couldn't the first time, but everyone's back. So everybody, good. can they hear me? Yep, they can hear you. Hey, how's everybody doing? <laughs> we had another hiccup. I'm so sorry, but we're gonna get going with Festool Live. Uh, we started again. We had another hiccup. We're trying to find out where the the ghost in the machine is. Okay, so here we go. All right, over here we got Big D on the board. Hey, everybody. He's a sticker and a mover, and he has perseverance. Over here we have, what's your name? Chris. That's it. We got Chris the Unit <laughs> We have Brent online answering all the questions. We got Minnie on the whiteboard. Sparky will be in here shortly. Somebody's feeding him one heck of a meal in the other room, and it's probably hot dogs. Okay. Don't forget. This will live on YouTube going forward, so you have a great way to review what we're going to go through today. It'll live on Instagram and Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe to all those uh, social media platforms, and don't forget to hit the subscription. To where from? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, everybody. Sorry, once again, we were starting to write where you were from, but Minnie lost. Don't forget to tell Minnie where you're from. We really thank you. Okay, Minnie, you're going to raise that board for me? So she's going to start writing where you're from. Okay, this is episode number 53, and I want to talk about the lighting in the room. We don't have our normal lights in here, and there's a reason. <laughs> We're going to shed some light whoop, 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 <laughs> oh on the Festool lighting system today. Yeah, baby. So when we were designing the content for this, I thought and thought and thought and thought, Wow, how are we going to go about this? Because we only got like three or four lights. But there's so much to this. And I was talking to Brent this morning, and I was saying, you know what? There's a lot of technical tech specs on this stuff. So bear with me. I Hopefully, I remember everything. Um, but I'm going to go through it. And what I want to do first is I want to give you a little history about the lighting since I've been working here at Festool. And boy, have we learned a lot, and we continue to learn a lot. I'll tell you what, I was just talking to somebody on the phone about uh, LEDs for my shop, and I couldn't believe how much I knew to talk to this expert. So bear with me, I'll kind of share and impart to you some really cool things to look for when you're trying to choose the right Festool light and what's right for you. Okay, so I want to start off with this one, okay? This is no longer available, okay? But this we call the Sys Uni. It had three LEDs here, and Chris, can you shoot this? I'm going to show you. See how it was spot orientated? This is great working around. You had a, a you had a, the ability to rotate it. It worked off a battery, and that was it. Okay, it had a hang hook, so you could put it on a two by four. Then <coughs> we came out with this. And when I first saw this, this is the K A L one. This is the Sys Light one. Okay. Now I'm going to try <laughs> not to shine these right at the camera. Okay, but you have a brightness. That's about 30%. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's, it's a reverse on the new one, okay? But this is the original Syslight one. See the brightness of this? You have six LEDs, okay? And with that, that's at 100%. You get about 110, no, 90 minutes in, of uh, usage on this. It's got a 7.2 battery inside. And this is at 30%. You get 200. 140 minutes and there's six three watt LEDs. Whew, I'm not going to sleep tonight. That's a lot of information for my brain. But once again, it had uh, and it came or still comes with a charger. Okay, 110 charge. You plug it in. Okay, and you can charge it. It's a 7.2 volt. But also included is what the automotive charger. That is still available because that comes with the what. The, the new Sys Light 2. So I didn't know how we could improve it, but I'll show you some improvements. It still comes with the hang hook. That's removable. And if you want six, hot, six hours of continuous usage, it works with all our 12-volt batteries, lithium-ion, all the way up to 18-volt. Okay, now, the nice thing about it, it's got a three-year warranty. Okay, and that's a wear and tear warranty. That's a drop it on the ground, throw it around. It's going to be warranty. So when we were doing that in the original Syslight, we had some guy go out and run over it with an F-150 over 100 times. What? 
And yeah, the only thing that will, yeah, the only thing that was wrong with it, we took it into Lesta, and he replaced this little rubber gasket. Wow. This is a heavy duty aluminum case. Okay, but the important thing about it is that it acts as a heat sink. You got a lot of illumination coming out of there. Now, this is the newer version. I think we came out with it three or four years ago. This is the KAL2, Syslite 2. All right, now, everything's basically the same, except there's 12 1.5 watts. And in doing that, we, the 7.2 volt battery internal went from a 2.4 to a 2.9. So it lasts longer. But here's where I get confused. Right away, <laughs> there's your bright 100%. Oh, no, I'm sorry. See, it's reverse. So and that's 30%. You can see how much brighter it is, right? Then when I hit it again, you'll get 110 minutes on this. And then right here, you'll get 200. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Here I go again. 290 minutes, 110 minutes, but look how much brighter it is. And that's a little bit different. It's 5,000 Kelvin. I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. And now it'll last a long time if you leave it off. <laughs> but it still has that three year bump it to wump, bump it to bump uh, warranty. This slight will last forever. Now, a couple of little technical things. When I take this and put it on the ground like this, this has got a 10 degree cast. Here it's got, when I lay it down here, it's got a 20 degree cast. And right here, it's a 30 degree. It's all been built in. It also has a quarter 20 thread for a tripod mount. Okay, so if you have a regular uh, photography uh, um, tripod, that'll thread right in there. But what's really cool is there's a set version, and it comes with this tripod mount. And I'm just going to screw that in, and I pretty much at home just leave this on here like this, because on all my sys ports at home, and it's, look, check it out. I could just take that, and it sticks right on there, and I can aim that anywhere. But if I'm working off an MFT and I want a, a small raking light or task light, look at the magnetic base. You see this right here? There's a little through hole. I can take and put a clamp right there and lock it in. But it also comes with me. Follow me on this one, Chris. Woohoo! It comes with this steel washer where I can mount that just like this, okay, on any stud. So there you go. It's very well thought out. There is a set version for this. It might be worth checking out for you. And I want to show right here, so hopefully we can see this. I'm going to hit the light, and you're going to see how it casts out. Okay, it's 170 degrees. Look at that. That'll wow. light a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to set that down. Now, the next light <laughs> is unbelievable. <laughs> and, and here's where I really, really learned about Calvin. Um, all our lights, whether it's the inspection, the Syslite 2, the light on the Planex, or this baby right here, the Syslite Duo, okay? We really talked about Calvin because it, it was really clear. It's 5,000. So if you've ever used halogens and you get a yellowy light, that's usually in the 3,000 range of Kelvin. And then a lot of people will go for the maximum, uh, maximum lumens, and it'll be in the the 8,000 range, and that's where you get on the LEDs, you get the bluish. True color rendering is right in the 5,000 range, and that's what we wanted to accomplish with the Festool lighting. So when somebody says, what makes that the big difference? It's the Kelvin. And for me, when it's 5,000 Kelvin, yeah, it's bright. This is 8,000 lumens, okay? It's very bright, but it's, you can read tape measures. So much clearer. It's the clarity of the light. The, uh, it's clean light for me when I read tapes. So I want to point out a few technical things on this. It comes in a sustainer, but when I have it tilted at like here, it's 30 degrees. And here, when I have it tilted on the handle, it's 10 degrees shooting down. Okay? When it's on the tripod, okay, it's at a perfect zero degrees. And Chris, if we could step back here, I want to plug this in. Okay? There's no switch. On this, I'll answer the question right away. There's no switch and there's no outlets in here. And we designed it that way. Believe it or not, this is a very compact form. Your venting is right here. So to make sure we could still keep it compact, we would if we would have put a switch in here, okay, or an outlet, 
we because it would not it would heat up too quick i should say we wanted to make sure we could make a bright enough light and the chris if we pop it over there i just want to plug this in and look at that that's a whole work site light okay where the cis lights okay the ones i just went over one or two or more task lighting this illuminates the entire room you're working in and with that 5000 yellows are the hardest one a painter needs to render and you get perfect color rendering with that 5000 kelvin so this this is quite the special light i actually think it's quite illuminating okay never mind <laughs> moving on moving on okay so whew, here at festival we were coming out with all these lights over the last five, six years, and I was laughing because I had a training. i got to tell you this story. I was tasked with this light. This is the inspection light, and I'll talk about inside sales. I was doing an internal training, and a couple of the ladies went, oh, no, Sedge, <laughs> not another light. And then I took them out in the hallway, okay, and I said, what do you think of the hallway? And we don't have a remote camera on this right now, but I'm going to try to emulate it over here. We went over to the wall. Chris, follow me over here. Okay, and of course, you know, I mudded this and it's really bad, but they were looking at the wall out in the hallway and I go, you see any imperfections? And they go, no. And then I took the inspection like this has got a 16 foot cord. Okay, you got a button right here. Check this out. You could see all the imperfections on the wall, can't you? Oh, boy. So what's cool about this and not cool about it, we always say it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> okay. This will reduce all your callbacks. And when I say that, say you're uh, painting something and you go, hey, that looks really good, and you're out of there. And then late in the day, a light comes in from the West. We call it a raking light and every imperfection. So what if you can inspect it right? And the really important thing about this one is it's wide cast, okay? So you don't have to go really task light everything. You can just shine it in a few spots and you can show where you need to rework it before you have to drive back from the shop to go back to the customer's house. And the inspection light has so many, many uses other than just inspecting walls for paint and drywall. Like right over here, uh, I'm just going to turn on my Vaxis, and we're getting set up because I'm starting to get some samples sprayed for our polishing uh, Festool Live in June. Um, and when I was looking at these, these are old samples. I said, hey, I wonder how these are for polishing. And I brought my light in, and I went. And I started looking, and I was finding some imperfections. Like right in here, I got some scratches. Look, look right here. So it's the way the light... Oh, my God, look how dusty that is. <laughs> is Ooh. that coming through? Yeah. Okay, so we have to... Uh, a raking light will allow you to do a few things. Now, let's take this piece over here. I know I'm feeling the planar marks on there, but when I'm sanding and you before you apply your finish, you should always check to see where the imperfections are. And I chose this out of the back because I just want to say, boy, if that planer that did that is really bad. But you can see where all your imperfections look at the tear out is and everything. You can just lay it there. Okay. Now, the other thing with this <coughs> that I just want to let you know or show you is you may have the tripod for the Sys Duo. There's a bracket that's available for this light, okay? Whether you put it in the vertical position or the horizontal, and it's fully adjustable. The tripod will go all the way up to uh, 6 feet 9 sixteenths uh, imperial, so you have some good reach with it. It folds up. There's a carrying bag for that and the bracket and the uh, inspection light. But what I really saw on this is if you've ever spray finished or used, used a, uh, a cup gun to finish or however you, whatever you use, is I really like this because I always had a light in my shop when I was doing this because I wanted to see my overlap while spraying, and this will let you lay down the finish really nice. We always just used to call them raking lights, but I had a halogen at the end way back when, uh, when I was spraying, and it just lets you get a better or a more effective coat of finish on there. So the inspection light is just not for looking at walls. You can use it for a variety of things. I know guys in the tile business that lay that down, and they can see imperfections on their set of tile okay, for leveling. So those are some of the choices you have for lights. Now, 
Those are the individual lights, and it sounds funny, but that tra has transferred. Like when we look at some of these lights here, we have one on the Cavex. So you can see, look, you can see where the blade is. Those are stroboscopic lights that actually hold the blade or make, you could actually follow a line better because the blade looks like it's standing still. And then when you look at it from this angle, you can actually see your exact cut line if I had a blade in there. We also have these LEDs right here. And somebody will say, oh, it doesn't shine on the bit. Yeah, it does. Okay, it's where's it shine? Right at the point where it needs to shine. So we have that. We have them on the, all our drills. I, the, the one thing I like about the light on the CXS or any of our drills or impacts is I don't have to have it running. I can go in and inspect where I need to inspect before I drill. And you can see where it's, it's a great task light right on there. Okay, I'm thinking if I covered everything, I'm going to keep going. Oh, now. Woo! I know it's out in Europe. I know a lot of you have been using it. But I wanted to come over here and talk about the new Planex because that's coming out here in North America March 18th. May 18th. May, I'm sorry. <laughs> May, March, no, May 18th. March 18th, that was last month, Sedge. No, it's coming out May. <laughs> thank, thank, that's why we have Big D here. Correct me. Okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> Somebody asked me the other day, when they were using their Planex, an influencer, what's the LED? What's the, um, the Kelvin on it? And I said, and I checked, it's 5,000. So if you're working with a duo or an inspection light, it's the same clarity and color rendering of it. But more important, we would see people sand with the Planex, whether the classic or the EZ, and then inspect it. Here you don't have to. You just turn it on, and it's random orbit. And you can sand and inspect your quality of your surface at the exact same time. And it's a huge time saver. And that LED went through several iterations to get it right. It's a full 360 degree LED. So what we've learned on our lighting, we're bringing to our tools the ones that need it. So. Did I cover everything, guys? I think so. All right. Excellent. So just letting you know, this summer we're planning some killer content already. We thank you for your patience and the little hiccup we can get. We, try, we, we get it fixed for you. Okay. Most of the fault goes on Chris. Okay. So there you go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Did I ever tell you, Fest2 Live listeners, how much we love you? A this is times. awesome. Look at where all the people are from. Oh, my God. Get a, get a look at this, Chris. Isn't that unreal? Okay, so let's see how I'm doing. I want to call out Ian Harrison from East Yorkshire. I know it's probably about 6.30 there, Ian. Hope you're doing good. Yolari, Finland. Princeton, West Virginia. Cairo, Egypt. Iceland. <coughs> Tupac. Tupac. Batavia, El Paso. We got people. We got three people from the Netherlands. Greeley, Colorado. Fenton, Michigan. Albuquerque. Berlin, Germany. St. Louis, Missouri. Inglewood, California. How you doing? Cape Town, Zionsville. Yeah, baby. Where's Zionsville? Is that in Indiana? Ten miles south. Okay, cool. We have Cinnaminson, New Jersey. How you doing, Rob? Good to see you, buddy. Ooh, Neuchatel, Switzerland. It's 1 a.m. in Japan? How the heck are you in Japan? <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool, huh? That's pretty cool. Wow, I just love this. Youngsville, North Carolina. Yo Yoka, Washington. Oh, Yak Olt, Washington. Very good, Minnie. Minnie's doing the phonetic. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Ryan, Mr. Coitus, how the heck are you? All right. Winchester, Virginia. Norfolk, UK. Whitestone, New York. Tim Lingby from Denmark, Bermuda, Chickchester, UK, Morgan Hill, California, Lausanne, Switzerland, Dundee, Scotland, Perth, Australia, Duleek, Ireland, Chelsea, Quebec, Edinburgh, Scotland, Medford, Mass, Mechanicsville, Virginia. Mo Ooh, that's cool. Maury, Mo Morrisburg, West Cape, RSA. What's RSA? South America. South Africa. Okay, Raymond, Maine, La Mesa, California, Katy, Texas, Boucherville, Quebec, 
Peter Alley, brother, how are you? Lightcaster Wales, Tallinn in uh, Estonia, Frederick Mellon, Maryland, Germany, Oregon, Jed from Nolens, yeah, baby, Chelabinsk, Russia, Kayalami, South Africa, Hepburn, UK, Bulgari, is that Bulgaria, Mini? Okay, mini <laughs> spelling, baby. All right, French Alps, Whitefish, Montana, Philly, PA, Ottawa, California. Oh, no, Canada. Are you saying CA? Is that Morgan Hill, California, or Morgan Hill? Ca okay, whatever. Vince Vinny from Canada Service Center. Bear, guys, bear what? Delaware. Okay. Oh, we're in Delaware. De we're in Delaware. I'm going to turn it, mini. We got more people here. Holy moly, are they going. Montreal, Van from Michigan, Bristol, England, Illinois, Toledo, Ohio, Banjo, Banjo, Banjo Island, Pinehurst, Sunnyvale, California, London, Ontario, Favorite, Georgia, Ireland, Duluth, Minnesota, Bumpus, Oliver from Southern California. Hey there. Okay. That was that. I just lost your mic, Sid. There we go. Back on. Okay, everybody. Man, this has been one heck of an Keep doing this. <laughs> and we love doing it. Brent, once again, thank you for answering all those questions. Minnie, thank you. Thanks for brightening our you. lives. Chris, you're awesome. Big D, you are the man. Chris is buying you lunch. That's right. All right, everybody. We will be back here next week. And you, oh, my God, you better be prepared. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to drop it. Next week, we're talking track saw. Which track saw? The new, see if I get my numbers right, the new T S C 55 K E B. We're going to be in here with the brand new tr cordless track saw, and you just wait what we got planned for you. We love you. We'll see you next week. That's a wrap, baby. Woo!